Alright guys, here's a quick troubleshooting and repair video for troubleshooting the temp sensor on the Teleria MX4 Sting. Um, if you're turning on your bike and the bike is cold and you're getting error 42, 43 flashing, um, the first thing you're going to want to do is open up the motor and inspect the wiring. Um, today I'm going to show you how to do that. So with the bike off, you're going to take a 2 millimeter hex key and open the three bolts that are on the motor cover here. This will give you access to the temp sensor. And once you've removed this cover, you'll see the temp sensor wire and also the encoder connector. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is inspect the temp sensor wire for any damage. Um, there is some extra slack pushed up into this area. So you can go ahead and pull this out. And you may find some damage here. I have found one that was damaged right here. And I was able to repair it with a quick little solder job. Um, if you do find a damage here, the most professional repair would be to solder it. Um, if you're uncomfortable with soldering, we can send you a replacement connector that you can then crimp into place and then and then tuck the wires out of the way. Um, if you don't see any damage here and this connector is still fully plugged in, we may need to replace this temp sensor PCB. Um, I'm going to show you how to remove this PCB and also install a fresh one. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and remove this little silicone from each one of these three screws here. And you'll also want to remove the silicone from this connector and this connector. You don't really need to get it all off, you just kind of need to break the little seal. This connector here, you'll want to carefully remove some from the sides. Now before you unscrew the three PCB mounting screws, you will kind of want to mark the position that they're at. So for reinstalling it, you do want to put it in the same position. At the end of this video, I am going to show you how to recalibrate this sensor do that through the display. Um, so if this doesn't get bit, put back in the exact same spot, it's super easy to recalibrate. Now with a small Phillips head, you're going to want to just push this the silicone out of the way with the screwdriver and unscrew all three of these. Now if you're inspecting this and you don't see any damage to this wire, just wait for us to send you a new PCB before you remove this one. There's no real point in removing it and then waiting for us to ship you one. Alright, so once you've got all three of these screws removed, you can pull this board out. And it is easier to unplug these once this board is kind of dangling. For this main temp sensor connector, you just pull straight up. And you can see it's only two little wires. Um, for the encoder connector, you do want to push in on this and then pull on the PCB and you can get it unplugged. So you can see on the back there, there's your little encoder, which reads on the magnet. Um, and then you also have a temp sensor on there. So for reinstall, it's going to be basically the exact same. You're going to want to start by plugging in the big encoder connector. And then carefully plugging back in the temp sensor.
All right, next you're going to want to start to loosely install all three of these screws. They are very tiny, so just take your time. And the third one, which holds the little wire. All right, now before you tighten any of these down, you do want to rotate this back to where you put your little Sharpie marks. Alright, you can see I got one Sharpie mark there, one there, and one there. Now it's time to snug these down. You don't want these super tight, otherwise you may crack the board. But you don't want to leave them loose either. Now if you do need to change the connector and you ended up with a big bulge when you replaced or repaired the broken wire, you do have lots of room to kind of coil these wires around in here. And go ahead and check that all three are tightened down. <clears throat> Now you can re-add a little bit of silicone to the connectors. You can put a little more silicone on top of the screws if you want. Um, I don't really see how these would come loose, but the factory does it, so you may as well replace it with a little more silicone. Um, I have some here, it's called liquid tape, and it's like a kind of a mellow silicone, so I'm just gonna dab a little bit on each screw. We'll put a link in the description where you can buy this stuff. It's great for insulating wires. It's like a mild silicone. You don't really need this to look pretty. It's all getting covered up. All right, now it's time to replace the motor cover. I'm gonna line up the three screw holes. And we don't have an exact torque spec on these, but you can kind of feel these bolts just come to a stop. So just tighten them down until you feel them basically stop. All right, now, regardless of whether you've replaced the board or not, if you have unbolted it and moved it, I do want you to recalibrate your motor. It's very easy. I'll show you that right now. All right, so if you've moved the PCB in the motor at all, it's time to recalibrate the motor. Uh, you turn the bike on, hold down the top button, which will bring you to the menu. You want to scroll down to the bottom selection, which is match, and hit the M button in the middle. You're going to click down to execute. And once you hit that, the wheel is going to spin forward and backwards just a very small amount and then it's gonna say success. Or you can exit that by holding on the menu button 
and then you do need to cycle the power before your bike will work again. 